The tournaments on 45 TV are brought to you by the Greater Twin Cities Honda Dealers, proud sponsors of Minnesota Youth Basketball. One championship down, three more to go here on Championship Saturday on 45 TV. Chris Long back with Rachel Bannon. We're getting ready for the Double A Championship, the only of our four championship games where the number one and number two seeds made it through. These two teams look fantastic in the semis. Providence Academy is a team, if you haven't seen them, they're a lot of energy and have one of the best young stars in the entire state in Madden Greenway. Yeah, Providence is a really fun team. They have a seventh grader and eighth grader in their starting lineup. That's insane. But they get a lot of balance scoring from everybody. And they have more size inside. So I'm hoping to look, see them get the ball inside more today. Yes, yeah, sisters Maria and Grace Counts, fantastic players down low as well. Fergus Falls, this is the first time they've ever been in the finals. They have four senior starters. They are known for their defense and their energy. Definitely a lot of leadership on that end. They can really score the basketball, especially Ellie inside. She has 20, she averages 25 points a game. I'm looking to see her do something today. Yeah, Ellie Kolbeck averages 25 a game in both the quarterfinal and the semi. She scored exactly 25 points. She does carry the offensive load for Fergus Falls, who got through the bracket, beating Pequot Lakes and Minnehaha Academy. You see on top of the bracket, Providence Academy got through as well. What's a key to this game? I mean, these two teams, they both are fast. They both can shoot. How do they share this moment like Hancock got to do about 20 minutes ago? We've been talking a lot about defense wins games. Of course it does. But I'm kind of looking to see a big offensive performance from both teams. They both can put the basket and the basketball in the hoop. I kind of want to see who's going to outscore the other team. Dave Lee and Leah B. Olson will call it for us. We're going to send it down to them next as we play for the double-A championship here on 45 TV. Providence Academy won the state championship in 2012. Fergus Falls, they're looking for their first. Rachel, as we get set to tip it off, what else do we need to know about this game? I think that Providence, I talked about this a little bit more, but they have a lot of big girls inside. I think they need to use that. And on the other end, Fergus Falls has bigger guards, much bigger guards. So I'm thinking that they're going to have to figure out how to use that size. I'll tell you what, it's the double A game, so they're smaller schools. But Rachel and I are having a hard time hearing each other. That's a credit to two amazing fan bases. We saw Fergus Falls in force earlier this week. We're not going to be able to talk at the end of this. I know, and it's very loud. You love to see the energy. You got everybody. This place is pretty filled up. The barn's the best place to play. I'm excited to see what happens. Here comes Providence Academy. The Lions 28-4. and four. The Otters are 26-5. and five. That's part of the great thing about this building, right? It doesn't take a sellout crowd to make it feel electric in here. You've played in here. This place is tough to play. It's really tough to play. I mean, for many different reasons, but to be able to hear your crowd so easily, see your fans, it's the best environment to play in. Hancock champions of single A. We will have a double A championship here shortly. Will it be Providence Academy or Fergus Falls? Let's meet the teams downstairs with public address announcer Jane Voss. Fans, before we start our 2A championship game, I'd like you to direct your attention to center court for a very important recognition. In 1976, Lisa Lissamore stood at center court with her teammates from St. Paul Central High School as they won and then celebrated the first class 2A championship in the Minnesota State High School League's Girls Basketball State Tournament. Today, her journey of tireless and passionate service to the Minnesota girls basketball community brings her to center court once again. The Minnesota State High School League's member schools would like to take this opportunity to thank Associate Director Lisa Lissamore for 34 years of unprecedented service, commitment, and compassion to education-based activities. Her mission of creating initiatives and opportunities for participation and leadership growth has been instrumental in creating paths of success for students. Fans, please join us as we thank and salute Lisa Lissamore for her unforgettable enthusiasm and service to the member schools of the Minnesota State High School League. Thank you, Lisa Lissamore. Good afternoon and welcome to Williams Arena for Championship Saturday. At this time, we'd like to introduce the starting lineups for this 2022 State Tournament Class 2A final game. 
between the Section 5 champion with a record of 28 and 4, the Lions of Providence Academy in Plymouth. And the Section 8 champion with a record of 26 and 5, the Otters of Fergus Falls High School. Now let's meet the starting lineups for the visitors from Providence Academy. The starters for the Lions, a five foot five sophomore guard, number three, Brooke Honecker. A five foot eight seventh grade guard, number four, Emma Millerburn. A five foot seven eighth grade guard, number 30, Madden Greenway. Six foot one junior forward, number 41, Grace Counts. And a five foot 11 senior forward, number 42, Maria Counts. Assistant coaches for the Lions, Daniel Makepeace and Mark Forbish. The head coach of the Providence Academy Lions, Connor Getz. Now we go to the home team, the Otters from Fergus Falls. The starters, a five foot 10 senior guard, number five, Ellie Kolbeck. A five foot nine freshman guard, number 12, Bryn Sternberg. A five foot nine senior forward, number 20, Ainsley Hansen. A five foot nine senior guard, number 22, Tori Ratz. And a five foot 10 senior center, number 30, Hannah Polieski. Assistant coaches, Jess Price and Kendall Kohler. The head coach of the Fergus Falls Otter is Josh Steer. The officials for this championship game, umpire Zach Freeman, referee Angie Arndt, and umpire Marshall Behrens. Okay, Lions and Otters, let's play some basketball. Ready for game number two here in this uh, state tournament Saturday and the starting lineups coming up here in just a second. Some last minute instructions from your coaches. And there we go. Uh, Leah B will look at uh, who's uh, going to start here this afternoon. There they are. Two great starting lineups. This is going to be a great one. Providence Academy and Fergus Falls. Both of them bring a great intensity to the game. And what I love about both teams, they both have a great handle on the game. Fergus Falls brings a great defense. Providence has these young stars. It's going to be fabulous. Starting lineups brought to you by Education Minnesota, the voice for professional educators. And students, I'm just getting a kick out of the crowd here. You heard uh, Chris and Rachel talking about it. And the last game, I, you know, if you were just listening and you didn't see the size of the crowd, you would think the place was sold out. I got a feeling that's going to be this way, too, if it stays nice and close, which we're hoping for. A good game out here this afternoon by both squads, and it'll be controlled by Fergus Falls. Ellie Colbeck, man, she showed us why she's got a scholarship over to South Dakota State University yesterday and the day before. Yeah, she just has a great handle on the game. Does a nice job of being the floor leader and knows how to attack. Open for the three to start the game. Not going to go. Rebound, haul down. And Grace Counts and Maria Counts were awesome last night. Hope Counts, too, the other sister who will come in later. There's Madden Greenway. <laughs> She's going to start the game off with... Uh, a runner to the hoop, and she is, that's what she's got, of just a burst of energy all game long. I love it. I love starting a game like that. That's a true competitor. Just gets out there. It doesn't, if she is nervous, she just got rid of all of them after she laid that ball in. Otters coming off just an unbelievable first half wow. last night. They played it flawless, and number 20 right there was one of the reasons Ainsley Hansen man, did she have a game. Yeah, she was spectacular. 13 points, 10 boards. Millerburn, the seventh grader, hauls down the rebound. Quickly down court, counts. Just rolls off the rim for Grace. You hate to miss those open looks at the basket, but you can see that Providence is going to try to get out, get out early. 
You can just see the moves that Kolbeck has. I mean, how smooth and good she is. And she's guarded by Counts. She's coming way out to guard her, too, so she gets by her on that reverse layup and couldn't get the handle on it. So here comes Providence Academy of the Lions out of Section 5, the number one seed in this tournament. That is Madden Greenway. She's just an eighth grader out on the point. Hands it off to the seventh grader, Emma Millerburn, and then inside, and that is Grace Count. She's a junior. That's how Providence likes to score. They got a great high-low game with the Count sisters. Let's see if the Otters can come up with a defense that can slow them down. And the Count sisters go 6'1", six, 6'2". Six six, yeah, I love that we're bringing in the freshman, Hope Count. She, she had an impact in the semifinals game as well. Yeah, all three of them at the same time, and that shot will not go for the Otters. Well, they were blistering the basket to start the game yesterday against Minnehaha Academy. I mean, they were something to watch. Sister to sister. Not going to go. Rebound. Keep doing it. It's working for them. They're just missing that little finish that you have when you have nerves starting a game. Great dish, but Hanson goes down as she tried to get that shot off. And again, right back to the Lions. Open look on the way, and that's going to be just shy of the mark. But again, rebound by Honaker underneath the hoop. And Greenway drives. She's tied up. So Honaker will shoot it for three. That won't go, and here comes Fergus Falls. They're getting right. good looks. The Lions are getting really good looks at the basket. I don't know if you got a seatbelt for your chair or wherever <laughs> you're watching, but you might want to think about strapping that baby because we're up and down right now. Yeah, and we saw Colbeck. She's going to be good in this one, too. And... The Otters are looking to run as well. Just slipped on the court there. That's a turnover. We're going to come back to the other one. Both teams. Look at Greenway. Just the start of the game. The first baskets for Providence. She attacks right away. Gets through three defenders. Gets her team rolling. And, but the big sisters, the Counts, have a great high-low game. Section 8 champs. Number 2 seed. Fergus Falls is going to score. Oh, nice and, job. Hansen off with a nice dish. Josh Steer does a great job with this Fergus Falls team. You can tell their offense is set. They know where to go, find open spaces. Counts on the outside. That's not going to go. Yeah, Steer in his first year, too. Yeah, it's impressive what he's done because you can see his team is really well coached in Providence Academy inside, outside. They do that so well with the Count Sisters inside, outside shooting that they have. And Fergus Falls had a great zone D, clogged the paint. They're going to need to slow down and make sure that you keep Maria and Grace out of the paint. Keys to the game are brought to you by the Greater Twin Cities Honda Dealers, proud sponsors of Minnesota Youth Basketball. Boy, these two, these two teams can move fast. Colbeck in and out. Hard to get it closer than that one and not score. Here comes Madden Greenway now, the 5 7 8th grader. Averages 24 a game. Launches the three. Ooh, he's feeling it already. Good yeah. sign for Providence. You can see that form, too. Nice follow through, and she is part of this. Lions team has been so good all year long. There's Hanson. And then uh, might have just kind of stuttered a little bit on the first step. Enough to drag it and lose the pivot and take a travel. Look at the confidence here. Number 30, Madden Greenway, the eighth grader. In a championship game, throwing up big shots. He already has five in this one. Going to penetrate the lane this time. Kicks it back to count. She's in a little bit of traffic. Good coverage by Fergus Falls. And I don't even know how Grace <laughs> made that move. But your name is your destiny, and Grace just did that on that shot. I love it. She worked hard for it. Foul. Going back and forth. And once again, we're going to see Colbeck kind of controlling the temple here for Fergus Falls. Here's Providence, how hard it is to get this basket, but she stays with it. Gets the nice rolling for Grace Counts. Colbeck. One more time now for the 5-10 senior out of the Central Lakes Conference for Corey, Sock Rapids, Rice, Brainerd, Alexandria, St. Cloud Tech, Sartell, St. Stephen up there, Wilmer, St. Cloud Apollo. There we go. Colbeck gets both of them. 
Coming off a two 25-point game so far in this tournament. We just started Providence. The Lions with the early lead coached by Connor Getz has done a great job in his five years over there. And it just kind of hangs on the orange rim. And Grace counts is off to a quick start. Yeah, Fergus Ball's going to have to figure out that high-low game of Providence. You can't let them have that space down low in the paint or they're going to keep doing that. Man, that's her second shot that has circled the rim and gone out. Greenway will set up the line offense. Looking for something down low. A little give and go. Nothing there. Blocked off by the Otters. It's a good matchup. Colbeck and Greenway. Counts that time powering that shot up and draws the foul. Let's check out players to watch here, Leo. And Maria Counts has already been important in this one for Providence. Has 13 points in the semifinals. And Ellie Colbeck has been outstanding in this tournament. This is a great control of the ball. She's a 2,000-point scorer. Soft touch on the free throw. Now you've got all three of the Count sisters in there. You've got Grace, Maria, and Hope. Players to watch brought to you by Lyuna. Build your future. Visit LyunaMinnesota.org. Grace Counts. Already got eight points in this game. Providence by seven. Here come the Otters. Leah mentioned Josh Steer. He's a Bemidji State product. Colbeck picked up by the freshman Hope Counts. He's going to take it to the hoop. Nice drive. That's three misses in a row that have touched every part of the rim. Counts. And they might have that lifted it. Time out of the court. This is an exciting one to start here. And Greenway will take you to break here on 45 TV. The tournaments on 45 TV are brought to you by St. Cloud Subaru. St. Cloud Subaru, it's you. Here's a look back at last year's championship game. Brought to you by Old Dutch. Quality lived here. A couple familiar teams from the 2A title last year, the Albany Huskies and the Providence Lions, or the Providence Academy Lions. And Leah, this was a, a good battle, and they scored up again last night. <laughs> that was a great game. I remember there was a lot of emotion in that game. Well, there's lots of emotions in all these big games, but really, really fun. Albany won that state title, and last night uh, the Lions got their victory over Albany in the state semifinals. Yep. And there you see some of the teams through the years. Oh, this Academy back in 2012. Remember that one? I sure do. Bram, remember that? Rebecca Dahl. Oh, those, those are great yeah. teams coming through with Bram. Otters with the ball. That's uh, Centrea Lockett that's just coming there. You'll see a lot of her. Number 24 now on the miscue. Picked up. And here comes Hope Counts. Two on two. She's going to take it and put it up. Not going to go. Rebound. Hauled down by Maria Counts. And then inside, a travel is called. That rebound by Maria Counts was her 1,000th and one. There it is. She had 10 last night. I looked it up, and that would have put her at 1,000, I believe. Okay. And so there she goes. Now she's got to go for the next 1,000. You, you know. That's pretty cool. Colbeck, Otters. A cold to start here. Trying to adjust to this. Providence Academy line defense. This is Colbeck, but boy, she's picked up. The counts is out there. This is Grace, who's a 6'1 junior, comes out and to guard Ellie. On. Yeah, the defense of Providence is good. They have height, they have size, and they're a physical team. Curly got the open look for three now, and that one is not going to go. Rebound. Lockett had it. She'll go down, and here come the Lions. A little bit of a fast break down. Oh, look at this. Uh -oh. All by herself. Yeah, that's a miscommunication. Grace has already got 10 points. Yeah, Providence didn't come out here with any jitters or nerves. They came ready to play. They knew what to expect. Yeah, Colbeck just makes it happen, doesn't she? I mean, she's not shooting. She's distributing. There she's going to draw a fall. She'll go the line for a couple pretty hard. Landing there for Greenway, but she's okay. And there's Pat, great sharing the basketball. 
Maria Counts and Grace Counts do a great job of it. I mean, they have just kind of made a career of passing the ball to each other. I wonder how, you know, at home if it's like that, they share everything and, and you know, I, I can yeah. say with my brothers that wasn't the case. And but. hope, you know, <laughs> gives them the hope and there's some other kids too, so. Yeah. yeah. Colbeck. Yeah, crowd is great here today. Just dynamite. It was the last game and now you get the community support for both teams and they're loud and they're clever, frankly, doing some clever yeah. cheers. Well, Fergus Falls was so loud during that mini ha, -ha game. I mean, it was amazing. Just a battle of shots. Everybody's a little bit cool right now on the offensive side of it. Let's go back to the lines underneath their own basket. They do have a decided height advantage down low. So far, they've been able to capitalize on that. And pass. After the scramble, goes right back in the hands of Brace Counts. She averages 15 a game, and that's her sister popping that one out there. That's Maria, the senior, and that's her first bucket. Yeah, Maria Counts, Grace Counts, they're doing a lot in this game already. They're inside, outside, and, and they're taking lead. They're taking the lead and pushing the pace. I love how they'll just dribble the ball down for it. Yeah, their defense is getting it done right now. Greenway tied up, and she's going to be fouled. It's Slumberland's biggest finance sales of end of the year. Look what just $20 a month will get you when you spend $1,200 and pay no interest for five years. Only at Slumberland Furniture. Williams Arena, come on down if you got some time here today or tonight as well. Have an opportunity to watch some great basketball. We got two more here tonight at Williams Oak Colbeck. Man, she look at her just kind of walking a tightrope yeah. down that sideline, and she's going to square off and get the shot off and nails it. That's how you do it. And that's a three. <laughs> she is something special. She really is. Greenaway and Colbeck. How about that for an All Star matchup? That one goes in and it's not going to go. And here comes Colbeck coming the other way. Her team down by seven. She'll stop and pop. And not drain that one. Rebound, Hansen. Oh boy, oh. bodies going all over the place. Lockett came down really hard. And she is up. Let's hear it. Watch your foot. Nice job. She has got a great handle on the ball. And she's able to get down court and then hit a huge shot. Just her cool, calm collectiveness on the court is fun to watch. Inbound pass. Good defense on that one. Colbeck and Counts going at it right here. There's the double team on her that time. Yeah, that's tough. You're looking up at that extended reach up there. And good defense by the line, Providence Lodge Academy. They're up by seven against Fergus Falls. These are two really nice teams. Board on the other side. Kick out. Greenway. Long three. And oh, good effort down there by the freshman. Hope counts, but to no avail. So this will go right back to uh, Fergus Falls. Now there's a look at Coach Steer. Played his high school basketball up in Warren, Alvarado, and Oslo, for Northern Minnesota. It's been so interesting and fun talking to him before the game and hearing all about the strategies. And he's just loves doing what he's doing. Well, these two coaches, Connor Getz and Josh Steer. I mean, at, at this level, it, it, so much depends on that coach's decision. Ooh, nice take. Foul. On hope counts. It's a good read by the freshman Sternberg. Yeah, there's no lack of really talented underclassmen in this, is there? <laughs> We've seen a lot come through the state tournament, and I think we might as well just go ahead and get used to that because they keep coming and coming. Well, the other part is the quality of the kids that come up. I mean, you know, in this game, we have two uh, starter from seventh grade. We have eighth grade. We have a fair amount of freshmen in here. I mean, and you have reserves that will come in and play who are an eighth grader. The, the level of their... Yeah, they're putting their time in. They're putting their time in in AAU in the off season and... And, and we're noticing the difference and seeing it in the play at every level. Lines. Want to make something happen? The dish to counts. She goes right to the hoop. Boy, Grace counts is off to just a remarkable start here for the line. Yep, really focused, doing what they do best. 
Open look there, didn't take Yep. There's a weave from Colbeck. Super athletic. Yeah, just because it looks like she's on the right side. You better wait till she's done. You're not quite sure. Greenway, she's got an opening. Missed the layup, but on the other side. Good teamwork there by Miller Burn. Miller Burns the seventh grader. Well, Providence is working hard there on the other side. Colbeck, though, look at her ability to weave through the defense. It's just nice. It's the take there, meets a secondary defender and shoots over them. So Fergus Falls trying to cut the gap here a little bit. Down this whole game so far, but a good one. Colbeck, the stop and the jumper, and a good board, no doubt about that one. Couch is going to lead it out to Madden Greenway, and they got a nice fast uh -oh. break on it. Just Millerberg put her hand up and then realized, no, nah, no, nah, I probably should have let that go. <laughs> and so that'll go right back to Fergus Falls. I like it, what they're trying to do. They're pushing the pace, and this is how Providence likes to play. They can play that way. Just got a little too much on that one. Way up high in the hands of Tori Ratz. Now, Tori Ratz is a really good offensive weapon. They've been managing to keep her pretty quiet right now. Lock it. Thinking about going to that bucket. And the kick out for the three. Oh, not going to go. Rebound. Maria counts. Greenway pushing it. Oh, down on the baseline. Wide open shot for Miller Burned. That's her first bucket. They to get everybody involved in this one for Providence. 21 13 Lions over the Otters right now in this first half. Providence Academy doing a great job on the boards. 18 boards compared to Fergus Falls, nine. To the hoop. Nothing there for Tory Rats. Colbeck will be picked up by Counts now on the outside. And she's going to shoot that three in that high arching shot. Which he needed to do to get over the outstretched arms of Grace Counts, and she just drops a three like that and makes it 21 16. And players live for big moments. That's Ellie Colbeck. It's Dr. Chuck L, so that means it's time for the fan cam. Brought to you by Xfinity Flex. Fan cam, here's who came to the game this afternoon, and they are making a ton of racket. Oh, the Otter is here. Yes. I was hoping the Otter would make it. Yeah. What? Look at this. I like that look. I got really dressed up for the tourney. Oh, the Otter. <laughs> I'd call it thumbs up, but Otters don't have thumbs, do they? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, this is a great crowd. They're just having fun going back and forth. A lot of clever. Hooked on a feeling. I noticed a lot of fans singing hooked on a feeling out here. <laughs> and the counts. Underneath. Don't get it. Lock it. On the outlet to Colbeck. Five point lead for Providence Academy. Colbeck kind of a stutter step there. They call it travel. There's Connor Getz. Doing a great job. Greenaway sees an opening. Yeah, she, oh, what a nice play by Colbeck. Did she get that ball in? Knocked it out of no foul. Wow. See that again. Quick take. You can see how fast Greenway is. And then there's the block. Swats at it. Oh, great pass. And Greenway shot won't go. Here comes. Fergus Falls now. Gonna push it down in a heck of a hurry. That's Colbeck. She just sees a little bit of light in that defensive tunnel, and she's gonna try to go right through it. And Milliburn, Milliburn's doing a good job on her defensively. But it's hard to defend her. Maria counts. Oh, look at this. To Grace counts, and she's gonna be fouled. You know what was fat to me was really a neat thing to watch with 
Uh, Maria and Grace were the number of steals they had last night. Yeah, they're so good at so many different things. We always think about the high, low post and all of that, but they were turning everybody over yesterday in their semifinals game against Albany or the Minnehaha Academy. Look at this, pushing the pace. She's already got 13 here in this first half. There's no question she is uh, leading her team. And Colbeck on the other end is scoring most of the points right now for Fergus Falls. Otters on the rebound. Who else? Colbeck right now has it. It's that screen over there from Rats. Trying to look for her on that roll, but couldn't get it out there. There's. Yeah, I think that's an illegal screen. It is. is that what they're going to call? Yeah, that was interesting. Colbeck was looking for Ottawa. Yep. Where Conacher is trying to get through here. And just kind of leaned her leg out. Kolieski. Greenway setting the offense up. Over to Honaker, the 5 5 sophomore. In the counts. In the lane, trying to spin. Oh, look at the attack by the defense tied up. That's going back, though, to Providence Academy. Yeah, that's, that's a smart play right there by Fergus Falls. Yes, who's that ball went down? Yeah. There's Angel Hansen. She was uh, very strong last night in that game. She's been great on the boards in this whole tournament. Greenway on the baseline. Good dish. Nice assist. And got to like the touch from the counts. That's now Maria count. The Lions really playing unselfish basketball right now. Stolen. There's counts again. You talked about it. Their ability to turn people over. The count sisters. Honaker. She's open. Yeah, oh. We'll get it. And now a battle. Boy, coming right across from the other side. Plenty physical down there. There's no doubt about that. You can see it happening right in front of you. Look at Greenway taking the ball. I mean, she could have taken it herself, but she gives the ball up to her teammate. Nice looking shot and unselfish basketball. Colbeck. Going to finish off her career with the state championship before she heads over to SDSU for basketball next year. Uh -oh. On the trip, look at trying to maintain the dribble. That's impressive. She did. Wow. Nice job getting out of that. Sternberg will give it down to Colbeck again. Colbeck to drive and draws the foul. She's just going to do a little bit of everything for the team, her team here, just like she did in the semifinals. But here she's got the handle. It goes down to the ground, has to hold on to her dribble. And has to get the ball to her teammate. She does it all. From the line here this afternoon, she is four of five. And one more time for Colbeck. Well, they jumped out last night to a 35 15 lead over a really good mini Hall oh. Academy team. I don't know if anybody knew what hit him. There's Greenway shot just off of the rim. Uh, great rebound. Yeah, that's locking. Locking it down. Really nice board. Millerburn on Colbeck. Maybe one too many uh -oh. passes there. Here comes Greenaway. She's all by herself. And Madden will lay it up and in with that left hand. Well, she's just such a great athlete. Defense into offense. Setting up her teammates. Seven points for her. More importantly, puts her team up now by eight points. Otters have come into this tournament, opened up some eyes. I don't know how many people knew a, a lot about them, but boy, they have shown how good they really are. Colbeck, nice little cross hand dribble. Look at that, no look pass to lock it, and she got it. Ooh, that's just what Curtis Falls need, but they can get Lockett rolling in this one. Centrea Lockett. Six point difference. And driving and turning around, a little spin move by Counts, and they say, okay, yeah, Ellie, you take it. And she will. Under two minutes to go in this game. State double-A championship. We've found one earlier. Hancock won. First time since 1997 for them. Providence staying in there. 
Player to player defense. <laughs> Listen to the crowd. Coach Steer looking on at his team as the Otters will have the basketball here trailing by six in this first half from Williams Arena. Trying to get a little bit closer and the drive to the hoop is up. It was a good idea, but just couldn't get the shot to go. And the rebound hauled down by Grace Counts. And here comes Madden Greenway. And the shot is up and the foul was called. No, what was that? Travel before the call. Okay, travel. Yeah, we've seen a lot of traveling in, in the last couple of games. Colbeck now got a minute 16 to go here. In no hurry bringing it up, certainly. But we noticed that last night, too, Lee. That first step she has is wicked when she decides yes. to go inside. It's quick. If you defend her incorrectly, she's going to blow past you. Sternberg. Curtis would love to get two more before they head into the locker room. Colbeck. She was filling up the scorecard here in the first half. She got 17. See how quickly Providence scores on this. Are they going to try to hold the ball a little bit? We've got 40 seconds to work with. And Maria counts. 5'11 senior will just wait. Connor gets, looks back at her coach, gives her some instruction. They look back, recognize that. Colbeck's going to stay back. She's telling her teammates to stay back. And Greenway will continue that dribble as they work this clock down to that last yeah, shot see, in this first I would, half. I would push him a little bit. You're just allowing them to take the last shot. I think you need to go at him. Down to eight. Yep, seven. She makes the move to the hoop. The jump shot is up, <laughs> and that's the one they wanted. Couldn't yeah, get sure it. Was. And the desperation heave at the end of the first half is not going to go, but good, exciting basketball here from Williams Arena. Providence Academy with a 26 to 22 lead right now. And Leah, it's been pretty fun to watch. Yeah, it's been a fun up-tempo basketball game. And you can see both teams trying to kind of establish how they want to play. And I think both teams want to play fast. The bands, let's give them a shout out too. They do a lot of work. They're showing up whether it's boys or girls or both. And they do just a great job. So... Thank you for everything you're doing out there. They've been keeping this house rocking. Some of these fan groups, so some of the schools are singing together, and yeah. it's fun when there's creativity and there's cheers. It's positive, and yeah, we, we've seen everything in this tournament, which is why we love them so much. But yeah, this has been an outstanding basketball game. Providence Academy shooting 34 percent. Fergus Falls shooting 32 percent. You can see how the two teams got here. Got some great games. That Fergus Ball Minnehaha game was amazing because Fergus came out so hot, and then all of a sudden Minnehaha came out in the second half, and we were like, that's the Minnehaha Academy we're used to. The great defense. Let's go down to the XL Awards here at halftime of this game right now. Turn it over to the PA. Ladies and gentlemen, it's celebration time. Today's celebration honors the 2022 XL Award winners. The Minnesota State High School League and its premier sponsor, Wells Fargo, are proud to recognize these students who are leaders in their school and who are engaged in life-changing projects that build stronger, healthier, and safer communities. The Excel Awards have been given annually since 1996 to high school juniors who demonstrate a strong commitment to community service. These student leaders are selected through a multi-level process that involves league member schools and an independent panel of judges. More than 5,000 students have been recognized with the Excel Award. 313 students were nominated by their schools this year alone. Presenting the XL Awards at Center Court are members of the Minnesota High School League Board of Directors. Matt Heyer from Little Falls and Don Ingebrigtsen from Rockford. They will be assisted by Eric Martins and Lisa Lissamore from the Minnesota State High School League. 
Now let's meet the 2022 Excel Award winners. Elizabeth Allen from Little Falls. Olivia Amsbaugh, Zambroda Mazeppa. Travis Boyle from Foley. Maria Bush Triton. Andrew DeFore Edina. Gennaro Delgado Jr. from Wasika. Ava Ernst from Totino Grace. Barrett Fitzsimons from Waconia. Fabian Gersbauer from St. Peter. Lamar Gordon from Two Harbors. Jude Gussie from Triton. Grace Grimsley from Pilger. Thank you. Camden Hansen from Russell Tyler Ruthton. Irie Hansen from St. Clair. Brooke Heimerl from Lester Prairie. Molly Klipnus Annandale. Isaac Kraft, West Central Area. Hannah Quant, St. Michael Albertville. Addison Lindau Nevis. Kari Mateka, Martin County West. Nazana Medvedovsky from Bloomington, Jefferson. Mackenzie Murphy, Belle Plaine. Chase Nelson, Red Lake Falls. Carly Olson, Ortonville. Alyssa Paulu, Perez. Ethan Petersley, Casson Manterville. Elizabeth Pollard, West Central Area. Richard Skyluck III, Zambroda Mazeppa. Sienna White, Chaska. And Caleb Zalek, East Grand Forks. Also selected as XL Award winners, but unable to be with us today, are Michael Edgerton from Eastridge. Zachary Grove from Janesville, Waldorf, Pemberton. Tristan Hill from Elk River. Emma McLay from Hastings. Apollo Oz from Apple Valley. And Saul Thompson from Mora. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 XL Award winners. Please join the league and Wells Fargo in congratulating these outstanding individuals for their leadership and community service. The tournaments on 45 TV are brought to you by Tria Orthopedics. That's why you're treated and how you're treated by Tria. Going to send four teams home as champions today, and one, uh, they're already texting their friends, hey, I hope you watch, we won a state championship. That's Hancock, the Owls, champions of single A, a fantastically entertaining first game of our day, and this second one, not disappointing at all, as Providence Academy leads 26-22 over Fergus Falls. Chris Long back with you, along with Rachel Bannon. What do you think about that first half? I think it was fun. I mean, it was a pretty even matchup. Um, I think that uh, Providence has to keep going inside to their bigs. I think that's working. Grace Counts had 10 points in 10 minutes, so they got to keep doing that. It kind of looked like Providence Academy was going to run away with it. Like you said, Grace Counts came out and scored left and right. They built a very early 10-point lead. Fergus Falls did a nice job weathering the storm, especially Ellie Colbeck doing what she could to kind of put her team on her back for a little bit. I really like Ellie. She was incredible. She has to keep doing that. This is what she does. They count on her to do this. She's already over half of her way to her, her season average, so they got to keep going there, but I'd like to see a little bit from the supporting cast on both sides. And credit Ainsley Hansen had a great effort defensively in the semifinal that got the Otters here. She did a pretty good job to help keep Providence Academy off the scoreboard late in that first half. Congratulations again to the Hancock Owls coming back in a minute. Colback has 17 of Fergus Falls, 22 points in her first half. They were down 10, and she helped them get back in it, Rachel. She's a beast. Hitting a transition three like this 
It's tough to do. That's college level stuff. And then hitting another one. Providence has to do a better job of closing out to her. She made that look easy. How hard is that to do to adjust it the ball? It is tough. And with the left hand. It's so easy. She makes it look so smooth. Providence Academy, they got out to that early 10 point lead. Matt Greenway inside. Then Grace Cowles trying to take the game over. You said it. 10 points in 10 minutes. Yeah, they got to keep feeding Grace. I like that Greenway is being aggressive and finding her post. I think she has to keep doing that. And then Greenway on the fast break made an eight point lead, but Fergus Falls cut it in half. It's four at halftime. Absolutely. They got to keep playing hard. I think defense has to step up. Turning stats brought to you by Everlight Solar. Save money, save the planet, start with solar. Somebody's going to win a title next on 45 TV. The tournaments on 45 TV are brought to you by Nissan. For great offers on Nissan's most exciting lineup ever, shop NissanUSA.com. Welcome back to Williams Arena. Great crowd, a lot of noise here as we get set for half number two. Providence Academy lines against Fergus Falls Otters, and we got a good one. Four-point spread as the Lions start out half number two with the basketball. Yeah. Let's see who gets rolling here early on in the second half. Counts to counts. Oh. And that's exactly how they started the game. Sure is. That's uh, Grace that got the ball. She's got 15 in the game already. Yeah, they've just done a nice job of, of playing the inside-outside game for Providence Academy. Otters looking, looking to get a little production from outside of Colbeck right now. As you heard, uh, Kristen Rachel said she's kind of dominating that scoring. She is so good. A little help is what they're hoping for. She dished it that last time. There's a good rebound hauled down by Ainsley Hansen, the 5'9 senior. Here's Colbeck with it on that left side. Going to set up the offense. Polieski coming up maybe to set a pick. Now she drops back. Colbeck drops back to him. Look how she's running everything, just controlling the offense. Hansen way out on top. Counts has her nice pass down low. They got an isolation down there in that hook shot by Rats. Is not going to go, but she probably drew a foul as well. And here is what they do so well, high, low, and then there's the handoff right back to you. So nice count. Tori will go to the free throw line, 5'9 senior. She averages 17 a game. They have shut her down so far today until just now. She had 22 in the quarters, 14 in that impressive win over Minnehaha Academy last night, so here she is again, a 5'9 senior, going to play hoops next year at Moorhead State. I'm sure they had that conversation about figuring out how everyone else can get involved in the game. You want to keep Colbeck hot, there's no doubt about that. You just want to make sure everyone else gets some touches, gets some rebounds, and is involved in the game. Honaker with the drive, there puts it go. up in, and the sophomore, she's got her first bucket of the afternoon. And that's another great person to get involved in the game, Brooke Honaker, the 5'5 sophomore. She's been outstanding, great defensive player, can hit big three-point shots, as we remember from last year's state tournament. Rebound. Got all three of the count sisters in there. That's a, a six one, six foot, six two right now down on your low post. And high too, right there. That's Maria. She's the senior. Yeah, this is what makes Providence so difficult. There you've got great size, their physical team, and then they have these great athletic guards. Out of bounds. And here's Brooke Honaker taking it in. Giving the Lions a little something extra. Back over to Madden Greenway. And look at that. Oh, man, won't go, though. It's a good idea. Yep, nice little finesse under the basket. Can't finish on it. Let's see if Fergus Falls can answer. What's the strategy here now? They're going to try to dish it off to a few different people as much as they can? I think Colbeck is going to do what she does, and she's going to, you know, oh, there you go. See, this rebounding is... That'll be a foul down there on Hannah Polieski. See here, if you see the battle down low. It's like a push off. Nineteen rebounds for Fergus, twenty-five for Providence Academy. So that's tightening up a little bit. And a whistle and. A Foul down low underneath, away from the play. So that'll be uh, 
out of bounds play here for the Lions of Providence Academy. I'm hoping they let this game loose a little bit because these are teams that can really get out and play and have, and it's good basketball. Oh, the quick oh. jumper. Man, that's a quick release there from wow. Madden Greenway. She's an eighth grader with already a thousand points, Leah. That's a really pretty shot. Otters. Making the trip down here about three hours away on I-94, depending on how fast you drive. Beautiful town. There's Colbeck. <laughs> 19. Greenway does her thing on one end. Colbeck does hers on the other. Maria counts looking down low. Nothing there will go over to Grace, her sister. And now we'll go down low to Honaker. Back out to Grace counts. Into Hope Counter to uh, Maria counts, rather. There's three of them. I mentioned last night <laughs> that counts. Grandpa played in the NBA, played his college All American basketball out at Oregon State. Uh, played on an Olympic gold medal team back in 64, then played 10 years in the NBA. Was Bill Russell's backup wow. at, at Boston, then went to the Lakers. And, oh, nice Look shot. Colbeck. She's just built for the big stage, Colbeck. She likes these big moments. You mentioned that Madden's parents, pretty good athletes. Chad, of course, we all know him as a great Minnesota Viking, and her mom was just a wonderful athlete down at Iowa. Track star down there. So. That corner shot, how about that? Whoa. From Maria Counts. Doing a little bit of everything yeah. in this one. The 511 senior is showing out in this game. Awful lot of talent on that court right now, and it's uh, shown itself here in the second half from Williams Arena. I hope you can get out here for the championship game tonight if you're watching us around town close to Williams. Going to zip on over and catch some of the action. And the pass by Colbeck bounces back to her. There's Hanson. Boy, they're covering her up in a hurry. She's not going to get that shot off. Colbeck kind of make things happen. She'll get that quick move on the pick and now fall another one away from the play. And this is on Fergus Falls. Look at this pretty little shot by Greenway. And then on the other end, it's Colbeck. Colbeck has 22 in this one. Yeah, it's a nice looking basketball. Now the jumper. You know, that's a pretty good spot for her to shoot, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, like inside that. that lane. Lines. Honaker's got that lined up in her sights. Just misses it. Rebound hauled down by Polieski. And now Colbeck will take it down just a little bit slower this time. Yep. Yep. The pace has definitely slowed down from the first half. In front of her coach. <laughs> and wants to clear it out. And the shot's blocked, but she drew the foul. Yeah, Maria counts. That I think those two may have been talking a little bit to each other. And she's like, I'm coming in. And Maria counts. Who's not in her head. Look at the defense that's there to meet her. Three Lions. What it takes to slow her down. Now Colbeck at the free throw line. She's been there a few times today. Five of six. They beat Pequot Lakes in that quarterfinal, 71-55. So they've come up. They've opened some eyes here at the state tournament. Of course, they're the number two seed too. So I don't know how much of a surprise that should be. Providence Academy with that seven point lead. And going inside. And uh, you love the way that yeah. the Count sisters are talking to each other. One throws in and the other one's saying, you know, you don't know, you know, move here or do this or do that. And then they go in. And yep, they back you down. And, and it's difficult because they have good size. Grace is 6'1, Maria's 5'11. And they, they just have nice finesse right around the basket. Colbeck with the quick release. That won't go. Rebound going to be hauled down by Greenway and she'll bring it up. Nine point lead now for the Lions and the shot is up and not going to go and they're going to call a foul. So Matt Greenway will go to the free throw line here. 
she's doing a good job. She is trying to push the pace in this game, and she set the tone of this game very early on with the first baskets she's in an, the game. She is an 89% free throw shooter. Now you got a 10 point spread right here, Leah. Yeah, this is getting critical here. Time out here at Williams Arena. Biggest lead of the game right there as we take you to break on 45 TV. Conversations taking place here in the team huddles right now as they're certainly taking as much time as they can Lee you see earlier in the game You're out of that thing pretty relatively quick. Yeah, but at this time in the game. It's a little longer Yeah, they're, they're working things out on both sides How about that first one tonight to Tina Grace and Becker boy did to oh, Tina Grace look good the other night well, Becker looked great, too I know again two great games we are gonna see tonight. It'll be fun to see st. Michael Albertville again go up against Hopkins. We know the Lake Conference is going to win the state title. <laughs> this is true. That's a pretty that crazy. Figured out. Yeah, I got a couple of your conference teams playing for the state championship. Uh -oh. Just a miscommunication there. After that long time in the timeout, that's not how you want to come back in. What do you say to your teammate when they when you, you two just kind of mix up, you just kind of yeah, let it go? Let it go. So? Yeah. Let it go. No time to think about it. What Fergus does need to do on the defensive end is they need to figure out a way to front down low in front of Maria Count. See how they just back in. Or they need to do a double jo job or a better job on the double team. Oh, ouch. That's an awkward fall. Well, that's pure hustle from Greenway to try to get that rebound down there. Hansen. Covered up though down in the corner now trying to get a three-point shot off and it's you know pretty tough Rats is a pretty good three-point shooter. They're not going to give her time to get that off now She backs it up and quickly covered again by Honaker Yeah, the defense is solid right now Oh nice block Counts. No easy way to get the ball in and they're working hard it's Grace Look at all the long arms in there waiting for you Kovac needs some help and finds rats under the bucket and that was partially blocked. It looked like by Honaker. Man, that's pretty good. The 5-5 sophomore got her hand in there. Providence has five blocks in this game. That's how difficult they're making things. Yeah, what a release. I mean, it just... <laughs> it is so nice and it's so quick and, and they need her to hit those shots. 26 points. Travel. Turnover going to go the other way. Fergus Falls fans see a little opening here. Look at the quickness of this. Runs right out. Just nice, quick, sweet release. That's Bantam line, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, like I was a just Rachel thinking Bantam the same thing, actually. Clinic. Remember when we were doing her games? That's all we were saying is Rachel shoots again. Rachel shoots again. Well, now, foul stops play that on Ellie Colbeck. I want to mention the fact that in this tournament so far, 25, 25, and now 26. Wow. Yeah. 25 points in three tournament games. That is not an easy thing to do. Very impressive. I don't know who that recruiter was at SDSU <laughs> that decided that. Smart. <laughs> but you picked the dandy. All good no strip by Lockett. But they maintain control of it. Oh, it is hard in there. And you got to put a body on those count sisters. There you go. Lock it up. They can they can feel it in Fergus Falls. Yeah, and that, that is how you get back into these games. We saw that in our first 1A game. How oh, Hancock got back into it. You got to use your defense. Yeah, the first game, Hancock was uh, down right away, and, and Miniota, who's a defending state champ, was on the move. Yes. And they got him to... And they uh, just chipped away at it just by turning him over and turning him over and making some big shots. That was a good game. Really fun. Colbeck off the glass. That's not going to go. 
And the ball's out of bounds. Off. Game summary. We've seen a lot of her in this game because she's been outstanding. Ellie Colbeck. Big shots on the other side. The Lions are sharing the ball, doing inside, outside. That is Grace Counts. Game that summary brought to you by the Minnesota Department of Health, protecting, maintaining, and improving the health of all Minnesotans. And as I was talking to Maria, Counts decided she'd put a uh, field goal up and in. Foul. Away from the basketball. That's going to be on um, Hannah. That was just a 10 point lead right now. And the Otters are a couple three pointers and a defensive stop away from the push Providence again. Sternberg out on top. Now she wears number 12. And now to Rats. Tori, the 5'9 senior, going to dish it back to Colbeck. Colbeck, just a constant motion man. She never slows down. There you go. And now she does it again. She just took her time. She saw the defense. Oh, just nice sidestep. Lays that in. Uh -oh. And one more time for Ellie. She got it. I'd like to have some little GoPro camera right on her headband when she's playing. Can you imagine? It'd be kind of fun to see what she's seeing. Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, she's just constantly moving. Good recovery underneath. Tough angle to get the shot off. And now a possession arrow. And that will go back to Providence Academy. Are the fans into it this yeah. afternoon? Yeah, I think the fans are trying to get their teams into it as well. Both sides are really hyped up right now. This is Hope counts now. Hope's been working with uh, four falls here in this game. The freshman. Uh -oh. oh. Lost her balance. Can't hit the shot. Colbeck. Because she kind of directs everyone just by kind of pointing where people need to be. Oh, it is pretty cool. Oh, man, is she having a tourney. And more importantly, she pulls her team to within four points. Wow. Providence Academy. Grace counts. Directing traffic. Looking down for Sister Hope. She's covered up. Counts and carry it. I don't know if we I can even hear the whistle. Timeout was called oh. by Connor Getz. That's how loud oh, it is in here. Wow. I don't know if he wanted that timeout. I don't even know what point he called it. It was so chaotic in here. Look at this defense. Gets hung up. Greenway on the screen, and Colbeck takes advantage. Well, they rotated defenders on her, and it, it didn't make much difference, does it? Yes, I mean, no, nothing's really slowed her down in this one with 32 points, and, and that's good news for Fergus Falls because she's really needed to carry them through this. But, boy, we got ourselves a game now. You know, Providence Academy with a four-point lead. And some of the crowd that came here, this is a Fergus Falls group. Interesting outfits there. Did you ever do the dress up for the state tourney game? <laughs> this is as close as it gets when I got a tie on. <laughs> there we go. Are we watching the Matrix or is this That's basketball? Very cool. I'm liking this whole thing. The Fergus Falls or the uh, Providence Academy version of the Matrix. Colbeck has 15 of Fergus Falls 17 points this half. She's the, doing everything. Yeah, the only other two are from the free throw line by Tori Ratz. So well we do know in these tourney games you do need someone who's gonna put the team on their back and it's clearly been Colbeck this whole tournament. She just the senior has decided she wants to go out with a bang, but she's really hoping to go out with the state tournament title. You know, um, I just want to mention Maria Counts. She's got eleven points, but Leah, she has six assists. She has seven boards. I mean, she's pretty much playing a complete game too. Yeah, and she's done that again. We talked about the turnovers in the semifinals game, or the forcing turnovers. Done a little bit of everything in this tournament. And 
she's going to put it up and in. Yeah, that was a big shot for them. They needed that. That's Maria counts. A six point lead. Fergus Falls with the ball trailing in the game here in the state title game for the double A championship. And they have got a heck of an effort. Everybody's going to sleep good tonight, I think, after this. And a lot of work going on there. We'll see a lot of physicality taking place down low between the bigs on occasion. And now the move to the basket and a foul is called. And this time it's going to be an Emma Miller burn. It doesn't matter who covers yeah. Colbeck. And she's sticking to her. Emma Miller burns sticking to her like glue. When an offensive player is hot, it is hard to stop them. Yeah, and you want the ball, don't you? Yeah, you do. When you when you're playing the way that Colbeck's playing, you're asking for the ball. Rats trying to spring free. She's a good three-point shooter, but they will not let her out of the the grip of that defense so she can get enough room to pop it. Then Colbeck, she doesn't need any room. That one will not go. A rare miss, but how about the rebound by Sternberg? Second chance and points. Colbeck right off the back of the iron. And rebound by Grace Counts. A 6-1 junior hauls it down. She'll dribble it up. Dish it to her sister Maria. Maria takes that guard position out there. Now that high low. And uh, good defense. There it is. That's the kind of defense you have to put on the count sisters. That's it. Did uh, they fall call on the play? Okay. Cow, you love it when it's loud in here that you can't even hear the referee's whistle. <laughs> there, and I heard it. Going to pop the outside shot. And nobody underneath except Otter jerseys. And they got it. Rebound in the hands. Of Tori Ratz in the dish to Colbeck, and here she comes with under six and a half and a six point edge for the Lions. Colbeck tiring out the entire starting five, I think, of problems when she dribbles through there. Look at the defense. It's so hard getting around this defense. There's Bryn Sternberg trying to go right side, quickly covered up. Go back left. Madden Greenway now picking up Colbeck. Looking on the wing. Nothing coming through trying to run players down low nothing yeah. there Let's see if They can wear this defense down. That's how you do a back oh, cut. That's nice looking Bryn Sternberg good time for her first field goal now a four-point game a lot of time left Greenway Miller burn counts Maria counts has great body control when she gets in that lane. Yeah, it's and it's just it's so hard to slow them down. They don't really have an answer for slowing down Maria and Grace counts. Colbeck this time Greenway or Millerburn picks her up. They're switching off on D on her. Of course she's moving around so fast. You <laughs> getting by everybody. That baseline jumper. She's kind of doing it from everywhere on the court. Got a shot she doesn't like. Now, I'm going to be a little more deliberate here. They back up the offense. Greenway then gets room to run, and Ooh, uh, she puts the layup up. Boy, she went down hard, being helped up by Fergus Falls, and Ellie Colbeck reached down to grab her to pick her up right away. I like the thought there, That's though, Dave. They pulled it out. And Greenway decided I'm going to direct the offense. And that was good timing for that. You know, it's interesting there, too. Uh, Colbeck just picked up her third foul. Well, 449, I don't know how much of a difference that'll make or not, but something, yeah, to, something, something to keep an eye on. Absolutely. Otters down by five kind of the pace of the game so far halftime was a four-point difference so really the second half's been even up uh -oh. ball tip by Millerburn nice play Greenway uh -oh. had it now she tumbles to the ground and a scramble and Out. this is going to be a possession arrow probably back to Fergus Falls here yeah boy that that hurts Time out in the court. Play of the game.
The Otters needed their senior star to have a big game, and she's having one. A big three-pointer by Ellie Kolbeck. She has done a little bit of something here, holds the ball, gets it down court, and then hits the big three-point shot. She has 34 points in this one. The play of the game is brought to you by Minnesota Rusco since 1955. Good, good game. Five-point difference. 4.22 left. This thing could go any direction. Yeah. Man, oh, Look at that day. Yeah. But her expression never changes, really, does it? She's pretty collected. Yeah, very calm and yeah. easy on the court. Ainsley Hansel inbound the ball for Fergus Falls, so the Otters will take it up here now with a little over four minutes to go and trailing by five points to the number one seed. This is number one and number two seed going at it. And the pass down Ooh. low. Greenway there to force the jump ball <laughs> and the ball will go back to the lines. Boy. I love the physicality of the Providence Academy team. Well, Polyeski had a, a nice pass there. It looked like they were going to get that layup, and all of a sudden, Greenway comes up out of nowhere and ties it up, and here she is now. This is Brooke Honaker right here, and then off to Maria Counts. And back to Grace, and Maria, that's her spot right in the middle of that lane, and no, but on the board, look at this. Uh -oh. The left-hander. Put a body on her. Got to block her out. Gets it out of the traffic. The Otters looked out that, that time. Let's see if they can hold Providence down on this possession. Coach Getz says, Matt, get back out here and spread this thing out. And so she's going to wait back to her now. When we saw this at the half, Fergus Falls let them dribble down. But in this case, there's a lot of time left. And that's what Greenway wanted to do. That's exactly the play you saw. You called it last time, yeah. Leah. Yeah, and you see the coaches specifically calling on her to do that. Greenway with the rebound. And now Coach Getz will see if he wants that same thing. She'll sit in that corner. Colbeck will come out and watch her. And Colbeck cuts it off that time. Here's Brooke Honaker. Over to counts. Ooh, boy, almost picked up. But what does she do? Realizes I might have an opening in the lane. Goes there. Back out. Not going to force anything, it doesn't look like, with 2.47 to go and counting. I mean, you got your, your, your six-footers out there dribbling the basketball like guards. No good on the shot. Boy, I saw Rats take a little shot there on an elbow, not on purpose, certainly, on it, but she's rubbing the side of her head a little bit. That I mean, there's, there's no room for the timid down here. <laughs> Uh, we're going back and forth here, but Fergus Ball is going to need to get a stop here somewhere. And when the ball is in the hands of Greenway, that's not easy. Ooh. Colbeck knocked it loose. Down by five, and they're going to push it up. they got a three on two. The three is on the way, and that is going to go. And oh, Colbeck wow. is putting on a show here at Williams Arena. It's a two-point game. Fergus Falls has never led in this game. It was tied once at 14s at 1425 of the first half. A lot of intensity over in the stands right now for Fergus Falls. Now look at Greenway looking at her coach. She says, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I want you to do? This. <laughs> That's awesome. That a that's, a, that's a real what do you want competitor me to do? right there. Yeah, go shoot it. And on the other end. That thing died did on the... Did you see how that thing went in? Yeah, it, 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 like the air got let out. And then the steal. And the big shot that the Otters needed so bad. What a <laughs> game. Yeah, this has been outstanding. Well, what do we got? A minute 59 for nobody uh, from Fergus Falls or from Providence Academy is sitting down at this point. Now, this is going to be one of those games that whoever ends up with the ball in their hand last second is going to win it because they're both playing great ball. The only thing I can say that the advantage Providence has is they have Maria and Grace Counts and that ability to score inside that way, and they've done that for most of the game. It's, they've slowed down on that last four or five minutes, but they have that option, and so let's see if the Otters can hold them off. They pretty much stuck with their starters. 
And Hope Counts, who plays a lot, got into some foul trouble. She has four, but she's back in there now, I believe. Yeah, she's down in the corner. Counts, counts, counts. Greenway and Honaker. Fergus falls. Apply the defense now with a minute 50. Maria counts. Now she sees a chance to go down low. She's cut off nicely down there by Hansen. So back to the top. Gonna try to run some time here, I think. Oh. Greenway to the hoop, counts with the board. Gets it out of traffic. Yeah, and that's why this team is so good, because you have great rebounding from the count sisters, but then you have that guard play that can attack the basket. And the coaches are coaching, man. They are out there, and I don't even know if players can hear them right now. Look at that on the oh. tip. Gets it back, and the shot is no. Yeah. It was dramatic as it could be by Maria Counts. Yeah, and Hansen almost got that steal. Good tip, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, good D, good offense, just good basketball. Oh, knocked loose. But Colbeck is there to retrieve it. Under a minute to go, can't get that shot back. Hansen will dish it out. This is Sternberg for the Otters trying to get something going. Colbeck knows she's got to get a shot off, and now a whistle and a timeout by Josh Steer, the head coach at Fergus Falls. I like that timeout. What's he going to tell him with 43.1? Well, let's see here. I have one player who has 39 points, so I'm going to say, <laughs> let's figure out how to get that player a couple more buckets. But I like that he took it right then because they were starting to run and they looked like just a little discombobulated. How many college coaches are out there shaking their heads said, okay, why didn't we get pulled back? <laughs> but, and then you're looking at uh, a lot of these players, you look at the Providence Academy lines and you... And you're looking at I, when can you be recruited? So you've got obviously Matt Greenway is going to be great, and um, Emma Miller and Burns going to be great. But they're in middle school. Absolutely. And so that's how it, that's how can it you works recruit now, a middle Dave. school? I, a college coach can talk to a middle schooler. And, well, I don't know the exact rules of when you yeah, can yeah. knock on the door. Maybe you can when they First you got, get them out of the crib and you determine how long <laughs> they're going to be, and then you <laughs> ask. But, but of course you got AAU too, right? I suppose that could happen there where you have conversations. There you go. I mean, there's a lot of talent down at these younger ages right now. Okay, oh, there's an open shot. Colbeck has it. She'll step back. And oh, man, just off the front of the iron with 34 seconds to go. Greenway, who's great ball handling skills out there now, will try to take a little clock. Hold on to it. Counts can hold it, and then she can drive. There was a whistle. Did anybody even know it? <laughs> oh, God. Awesome crowd. At the free throw line. Grace counts. Mothers had a good look at the basket. Grace had 13 in the first half. She's got 17 in the game. So the sisters have rotated halves. As far as uh, offensive productivity, missed it. And that ball's going back to Fergus Falls. You got four points, Leah, in 23 yeah, seconds. There's definitely time. Now the coaches, they're not going to stop coaching right now. And now they might as well stop because they can't, nobody can hear them. Little back and forth. And, well, they're checking something over at the. I couldn't figure out where we were starting, but they're checking something over at the scores table. I don't know if it's the clock, maybe. Yeah, all is good. We're going to go to 24.2. All right, here we go. Man, what a finish we got going here. They're going to just roll that in as long as they can. No pressure yet. Colbeck picks it up. Go right to the hoop, and she does, and she lays it up and in. Yep. And a timeout quickly called. Exactly how they wanted to do it. Nice job. 41 of her team's 50 points. That's, that's amazing. We knew she had to have a big game. I didn't know she was going to have that big of a game, but just look here. Just so easily splits that defense. Look at here. She sees the opening. Nice strong move. Yeah, even when she goes in there now with three people, 
she still her teammates they're pleased but she still looks like she knows that she doesn't she's not closing her eyes and just kind of tossing it up she gets through there looks at the basket oh yeah she follows she's, through yeah she's a complete leader has complete control when she's on the court the game is very slow for her she sees everything so well okay so they come out obviously in a press defense what do you think yeah, Providence Academy is talking two. about they're just down by two. I think Providence Academy just has to kind of decide which way are they going to go. Like, are we? Are, who are we going with? Are we going high, low, try to get the ball inside? Or are we going with Young Gun, get it into Greenway and let her attack the basket? Well, it is interesting because the Count sisters uh, are tall, but they can't handle the basketball. We've seen them come out and, and yeah, take the ball down and control it. And you, you see how they drive the lane. So you do have options, certainly. Now you got to get the ball in with 18.8 and a two-point game for the Lions. There it is. There's a quick fall. That's on Hanson. So they got 17.8 to walk on down with Maria Counts walking to the free throw line. Now as productive as Maria has been this afternoon with 17 points, I don't think she shot a free throw. You're right about that. So let me take a look at my many notes here. She's got a 75% free throw average. Yeah, big deal, right? I haven't shot. Watch this. That makes it three. Yeah, that's important, but this one really is important, isn't it, Leah? Because sure now you're is. looking at four. Wow. Two possession game. She's something else, too. Okay, Colbeck now. 15 seconds for Fergus Falls. Makes that cross-handed dribble. A three-pointer is not going to go. Rebound. The Lions, and then a quick foul. You got 9.2. You're going to send Madden Greenway to the free throw line. It's a two-possession score right now, unless you can get a three-pointer up there and get a foul. So Madden Greenway will be at the free throw line. She's got 14 in the game today. Four assists, four rebounds. To 21 in the quarters, 20 last night. Just adds to that total right here. More importantly, though, now we got a 55-50 score. Yeah, that is the key. Man, this has been a great game to watch. One more time. That was not going to go. So here come the honors. Colbeck now. She's got seven seconds. Going to push it, get that shot off, and kick it out to the three-pointer, and that's going to go up at the buzzer. That's going to count. But that, no, they're going to stop at point two. Got the timeout. It looked like the clock was going to run out. So point two. Can you get a shot off in point two? Is that it? I don't. What are they going to do? Boy, that was pretty gutsy. She just takes it and passes over to one of her teammates. And uh, Bryn comes through with a three pointer, her first of the game. And now with point two, you've got to work with Providence Academy with the Let's lead. See where the clock is. Shot. Good. Well, they might get what? Point nine, maybe? Is it when the ball is through the net? When it goes through the cylinder? So we'll see where they put it. They might put it up just a little bit. And when's the timeout? Can you see it, Leah? I'm looking. You gotta call that timeout. So there. I didn't see the timeout, but you certainly may have said it. We got point four is what they put back up there now. And inbound pass, and that's it. Providence Academy Lions have won in dramatic fashion here at Williams Arena. <laughs> and they take home the state championship trophy. What a game. What an effort by both squads. Wow, that was an exciting game to watch. And who would have thought when you when a player has 41 points that her team would not win that game? What a tremendous There's game coach gets. Colbeck. Yeah, he, what a good coach he's been. Oh, look at that. 
tears of joy. Nice way for Maria Counts to go out on her senior year. The sisters embracing. What a great effort by the Otters. And they have had an amazing tournament. That would have been their first state championship. Yep. But let's talk about Ellie Colbeck if we can. I mean, she pops in 41 points for Pete's sake. And she still distributed the ball as much as she could. She played great defense. There's our prime performance. Lead. Yeah, she's just really something special. And I just appreciated the way she played the game. How good she is, how she led her team. Wasn't showy, but just got it done and really impressive. Prime performance is brought to you by United Healthcare, dedicated to helping people live healthier lives. For more information, visit uhc.com. Let's go down to Jane Boss and get the awards presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we will present the 10 member all tournament team chosen by Minnesota High School Girls Basketball Coaches Association. The All-Tournament Team Award is sponsored by Wells Fargo and Delta Dental. The students selected for this award have distinguished themselves by their athletic leadership, team commitment, and exceptional sportsmanship. Presenting the All-Tournament Team trophies at center court are Patty Pancock from Wells Fargo and Greg Nelson from Delta Dental. And now, let's meet the 2022 Class 2A Girls Basketball All-Tournament Team. From Pequot Lakes, guard Macy Martin. From Albany, forward Kylan Garrods. From Minnehaha Academy, guard Addie Mack. And from Minnehaha Academy, guard Charita Lewis. From Fergus Falls, guard Ainsley Hansen. From Fergus Falls, guard Tori Ratz. From Fergus Falls, guard Ellie Colbeck. Nice. Stop it. From Providence Academy, forward Maria Counts. From Providence Academy, forward Grace Counts. Nice. From Providence Academy, guard Madden Greenway. Please join Wells Fargo and Delta Dental in congratulating these outstanding student athletes. In tournament action earlier today, bronze medals and the third place trophy was awarded to Minnehaha Academy. The fourth place trophy was awarded to Albany. The score of the third place game was Minnehaha Academy 53, Albany 52. The two-way consolation champion is Pequot Lakes High School. Now we would like to present the second place trophy and medals. These awards will be presented by members of the league's board of directors. They are Matt Heyer from Little Falls and Don Ingebrigtsen from Rockford. They will be assisted by Eric Martins, the executive director of the Minnesota State High School League, and Lisa Lissamore, associate director and the tournament director. Silver medals and the second place trophy will be awarded to Fergus Falls High School. <laughs> Presenting the medals is head coach Josh Steer. Please come forward when your name is called. Number three, Aaliyah Keller. Number four, Jenna Carlson. Number five, Ellie Kolbeck. 
Number 10, Carly Brager. Number 11, Elia Sodora. Number 12, Bryn Sternberg. Number 14, Maddie Budke. Number 15, Julia Hycheck. Number 20, Ainsley Hansen. Number 22, Tori Ratz. Number 23, Bella Anderson. Number 24, Centrea Lockett. Number 30, Hannah Polieski. Number 31, Megan Meach. Number 32, Carissa Eberly. 34, Elise Pribnow. 42, Macy Butler. And number 44, Gray Kornick. Student managers for the Otters, Haley Kugler. And student manager, Katie Anderson. Assistant coaches, Jess Price. And assistant coach, Kendall Kohler. And the head coach of the Fergus Falls Otters is Josh Steer. And now, will the captains of Fergus Falls please come forward to receive your second place trophy. The 2022 Minnesota State High School Class 2A Girls Basketball State Champion is Providence Academy High School. Presenting the medals to each team member will be Connor Getz. We step forward as your name is called. Number two, Tony Jackson. Number three, Brooke Honecker. Number four, Emma Millerburn. Number five, Bridget Healy. Number 10, Annabelle Warner. Number 11, Shannon Healy. Number 12, Marie Hayda. Number 14, Inga Nelson. Number 15, Mary McGinty. Number 22, Alyssa Condon. Number 23, Ellie Millerburn. Number 24, Eleanor Young. Number 25, Emma Boeing. Number 30, Madden Greenway. Number 31, Kira Miller. Number 41, Grace Count. Number 42, Maria Count. And number 44, Hope Count. The student managers for the Lions, Emma Wolwind. And student manager, Mary Rillins Lee. Assistant coaches, Daniel Makepeace. And assistant coach, Mark Forbish.
the head coach of the Providence Academy Lions, Connor Getz. And now, will the captains of Providence Academy High School please come forward to receive their championship trophy. Congratulations to both teams. Well, the parents are probably even more excited than the kids are. <laughs> I'm sure they are. <laughs> but Dave, that was such a great game. I mean, two-point game. Oh, man. Exciting from beginning to end. But if you just think about, like, just how well it was played. Um, just We saw so many great things out there today. Some great athletes and then a great performance by Ellie Kolbeck. I mean, that's going to be one for the history books just by how amazing it was to watch it. Well, you, you had a, a four-point lead for Providence Academy in the first half. They won by two, so Providence wins the first half. Curtis Falls wins the second half. Yep. And it was just so much fun to watch and the effort out here and the, how close it was. And uh, 2012 is the last time Providence Academy had a championship. That's for Curtis right. Falls, fun season. First time ever in a state championship yep. game. We'll be back. Much more to come on 45 TV. The tournaments on 45 TV are brought to you by South Dakota State University. Build tomorrow, start today at South Dakota State University. All the camps, all the hours in the gym, all the times practicing free throws in the driveway, that is the moment that they all prepare you for. State champions, Providence Academy, congratulations to the Lions. Chris Long back here with Rachel Bannon. They certainly earned it out there today. They definitely did. I mean, every time Fergus scored, they continued to fight back. They never gave up, and they always showed composure during those times. We were kind of talking, it felt like Fergus just needed one more basket, and that's a catch. Providence Academy held them off the board when they needed to. Yeah, I mean, credit to Ellie Colbeck. She was incredible out there. Um, but like you said, they just needed one more basket, but Providence stayed with it and got the win. Yeah, Ellie Colbeck ended up with 41 points, hit 14 of Fergus Falls, 18 field goals in the game. A fantastic individual effort, but the Count sisters, so good down low on offense and defense. Yeah, that was really fun to see. We talked about that in the pregame, that they have to go inside because they were bigger. Um, and they utilized that. One of the sisters was huge in the first half. The second one was even bigger in the second half. They were stat stuffers today. You made that point. Grace in the first half. And then Maria, just such a great job on the block. And then especially defensively owning the boards in the second half. I'll show you how they did it. Ellie Colbeck, this was one for the ages. 41 points, six threes. And it just wasn't stop and pop. She was finding her own shots. And Providence Academy knew it was coming. And she still found a way to score. She was a beast. I'm just so impressed. I'm really happy with her. And I so cool to see that for her senior year. You definitely want to go out on a win, but she was the definition of leaving it all out on four. Got the member's role on that one. You and I looked at each other after that one and said, oh, this is just her day. <laughs> However, it was the Providence Lions day in the end. Matt and Greenway, let's not forget an eighth grader offensively, defensively, and then this so far is the highlight of the entire tournament for me. <laughs> Should I kill time? Should I shoot? What do you want me to do? What did Coach Getz say? Just go. Go. I'm curious. I think either way, she was going to the hoop, and she made a huge play on that one. Great ball fake. 15 points, four steals. She was everywhere, and then the count sisters. There is grace underneath on her way to 17 points. Maria also had a fantastic game getting the ball to grace there. How do you stop these two? Man, it's tough. I mean, I love the sister-sister connection. I mean, they're just using their length and their size against them, and that's really hard to do. And it's one thing to do it on the offensive end. There's Maria. She had 19 points in the game. And just they've got that sisterly connection. Got a little lucky on the tip there. But they did such a great job finishing. They really did. I mean, they were just composed. I mean, they're seniors, juniors. They knew what they are doing. The stats are brought to you by Everlight Solar. Save money. Save the planet. Start with solar. What do you think? Wrap this one up. Great victory by the Lions. 
Yeah, I'd say the biggest thing here is the 32 points in the paint. Um, like we said, the Count Sisters. I mean, that's kind of how they won it. It was going inside. There is another Count Sister younger. We're only going to graduate one. Madden Greenway's in eighth grade. They have uh, a seventh grader in the starting rotation. Double-A teams don't want to hear this. Providence Academy's going to be around for a little while. Yeah, they're pretty good. It's it's going to be tough for the next couple years for teams to, to shut them down, but they're incredible. All right, so that's two down. Hancock, victorious. Providence Academy joins them in the winner's circle. Providence Academy beating Fergus Falls 55-53. to Rachel, we're going to say goodbye to you after this one. Marissa's coming back for the night session. You got any final words on what we've seen in these three days? It's been fun. Yeah, it's been so fun. I mean, a lot of buckets. This is one of the best days to be playing basketball, going home with a trophy. We love to see it. What do you think tonight? We got Becker, Totino, Grace. That's the 3A championship at 6. Then Hopkins and St. Michael Albertville at 8. What do you think on those two? I'm super excited for both those games, but I'm really looking forward to Becker, Totino, Grace. I just love how much fun they have and how hard they play. They're just exciting basketball teams to watch. So we had two real good ones this morning. We're going to have two pretty good ones this evening, I think. Hancock and Providence Academy, they are the champions. Second time champs for both, but people back home got tired of hearing about that one title that they won, and now they've got two. And Chad Greenway loving it. Madden Greenway and her lines, they are champions of class double. We're going to take a bit of a break here. We'll see you in a couple hours, 6 o'clock for the class 3A championship, and then 4A after that tonight, right here on 45 TV.